Okay, guys, so um, I promise today there's not going to be any new lesson uh, for today. What we just want to do is go over um, uh, homework answers. Um, I meant to record this earlier with our class, and I forgot, so now I'm doing it now for you guys at home. Um, after spring break, we just have two weeks left before the report card. Um, so we have the week after spring break and then the week after that, which is a short four day week because of uh, good Friday at the end of that week. Uh, and then that's closing out the report card. We actually only have one major grade right now, which is the last test. And, uh, so we need to squeeze in two more major grades when we get, we're, we've gone through the majority of the stuff for this unit, even though we got a little bit behind, we were able to kind of catch up a little bit. Um, however, we'll, um, and when we get back from spring break, we will do one new thing at the beginning of the week. And then you guys are going to work on a project for the rest of the week, start studying for your test. And then the following week, right before um, Good Friday, you will take your test. That's the last uh, major grade. So you'll have two more major grades right after spring break in those two weeks. Uh, but today, um, not a new lesson. However, there is a quiz for you guys to take. Um, so uh, before you do that, make sure you've turned in all of your homework, 6.1 through 6.4 um, today. 6.1, you guys, was a follow along with the Nearpod. That was back a, a couple weeks ago. So um, uh, what I wanted to do was go over um, 6.2. And if you guys have any questions about this stuff, you're going to have to email me, uh, especially if you're not logging into the Zoom individually uh, or uh, live during that class. Um, 6.2, I'm not going to go over a question. However, you have some vocabulary stuff that you guys can look up. Um, the next part of this 6.2 homework had you guys in a, use this interactive histogram. And the big thing I wanted you guys to see with this and answer these questions was what happens when you increase the bin size of a histogram? Bin size is the width of each of these bars. And, and on this interactive one, it's actually called interval size, but it's the same thing. But it's what, what's notice what's happening to the y-axis here, the numbers here, as we increase the size of uh, the bin size, um, there's less bars in the histogram because there's more data within each histogram. There's all these numbers are going up, so there's more data, and it's also a lot harder to see the distribution. You can't really see the shape of the histogram anymore. When you make it smaller, then there's less data in each one, which means that there are going to be more bars. Um, and so that's the first idea of this first half of 6.2. Follow through, answer those questions. Um, there's some questions here just testing you out and describing the distribution and um, making sure you talk about the center and usual features. There's some gaps in here. Shape, there's a skew to the right. And, you know, spread, what is, what's the a measure of spread here, the range? Um, the last part was what I really wanted to go over. And, and you guys can pull up your – pause this video, pull up your 6.2 homework, check your answers if even if you submitted this. Uh, this last part is having you do a little case study about um, a manufacturer or a, 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 a basically a potato chip company who's claiming that each bag is supposed to be 28.3 grams. How many of you have ever had a bag of chips um, and it's like full of half air and you're like pissed off because it's not as heavy as it should be? Um, so somebody's testing that. They're testing this claim that, hey, 28.3 grams is what's written on the bag. This is what it should be. So they took 25 bags. They uh, got the weight. They weighed every single bag, and you use the website to find to create this histogram. Follow this step by step. Um, you're gonna have to do this on your project when you get back. So make sure you're un you're familiar with how to follow these steps. It's literally right here um, with you guys. It also tells you the mean and the standard deviation of uh, the data when you type it in. So you're typing each of these numbers individually into this website. Um, and what happens when you did that? Well, here's the histogram. Skew to the right. Um, and the mean for those 25 bags is only 25.16 grams. That's, that's less than what they're claiming. So what's the problem here for the manufacturer that, I mean, the manufacturer could get sued. Um, it's false advertising. Uh, they might, you might not, they might lose customers. There's a lot of problems in this particular scenario because, Hey, the average is three grams less than what it's supposed to be. Um, you can see that the standard deviation was 1.46 grams. So that means that the all, all 25 bags, they were all within on average 1.46 grams away from this from this mean, from this average. Um, so they're not very far spread out. You can see the lowest over here is about 23, the highest is up, up to 29, 28, 29. So um, not very far spread out. So what does the manufacturer do? Well, they put in new measures to ensure that their bags are the proper weight. And then they take a new sample. So here's a new sample, 25 bags. You follow the same steps 
We create a new histogram with these 25 bags here, and this is what the histogram looks like. Looks a lot better than the original one. Why? Well, it's symmetrical. It's, um, you know, most of the stuff is right here in the middle, which is great. And actually look at the mean. The mean was 28.32 grams, almost exactly what it's supposed to be, uh, which is great. But there's still a problem. The standard deviation went up. And what does that mean? Well, now you have more bags that are way less than the mean, down to 22, and way more than the mean, up to 36. So this is still a problem for the manufacturer. Even though the average was 28, was right where they wanted it to be, the data is more spread out. And that's what I want you guys to understand about standard deviation. The more spread out the data is, the higher the standard deviation. The less spread out it is, the lower the standard deviation. So um, it's not necessarily good for them to have a high standard deviation. If I have um, a test and there's three scores and one of those scores is a 70 and the other score is a 90 and the third score is a 50, well, the average is still a 70, but I still have that 50 person that's way down there. That's way less than uh, that is just more spread out. And we don't want that generally in statistics or anything. You don't want to have a high standard deviation in your in your data. Um, so that was uh, 6.2. Um, hopefully you have finished that already. 6.3 was in two parts. One part was the um, video, which was just five minutes I wanted you guys to watch. That was prepping you to get to the 6.4 lesson. And then the second half was the uh, this question right here. So I'll go over the answers really quickly. It actually gave you the answers if you submitted your stuff. Um, wanted to explain it a little bit. The five number summary is what you need to create a box plot and it breaks it up into four parts. Okay, there's four quartiles. The first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, and fourth quartile. Um, and when you, in order to find this data, how do you find the range? Well, you take the maximum and you subtract the minimum. And the same thing for an interquartile range. You take the Q3 and you subtract Q1. The interquartile range is always the middle 50% of the data. And if you get to that, this part three, where you're actually labeling the box plot, um, this is directly, you can get it directly from your notes. The uh, minimum Q1, the median is your middle number, the edge of the box is your Q3, and then the last whisker is your maximum. And what this does is, breaks up your data into quartiles. So 25% of your data falls within this first whisker. Another 25% falls in the first part of the box before the median. Another 25% falls in the second part of the box after the median. And then the final 25% falls in that last whisker. And you may be confusing yourself like, hey, how is these are not even the same size? How are they even the same percentage? Well, you got to remember it's a percentage. The percentage of, of how much of your data falls in that range. So this 25% is just more spread out than this 25%. That's all that means. Um, the middle 50, this is this is all 50%, you know, 25 plus 25. So this is your middle 50% of the data. And then we also know, of course, the median cuts it in half. So we have 50% below the median, and then 50% of our data is above the median. Uh, let's see, how do I clear all that? There we go. Um, the uh, let's go to the next part. Uh, the best way to go through these is just kind of explain. Um, I did this with the classes together today too. Um, the box plot shows the cost in dollars of twelve different grocery items. This number twelve is is red and it's important because it's how many data points represent this box plot. How much is the most expensive item in the cart? Well, I go up here to the maximum. You go down and it looks like that's $29. How much is the cheapest item? Uh, the minimum right here, which looks like it's about $7. And then what percentage of the items in the grocery cart are greater than $21.50? Well, I did a typo here. Um, this should have said $20.50, uh, which is this part right here, which is the median. And it says how what percentage are greater than that? That's got to be fifty percent because that's the median. If you got that one wrong because I I wrote it wrong, then uh, you guys I'll I'll go back and fix it. This question says how many items in the grocery cart cost between fourteen fifty and twenty six? And this is a type of question that gets uh, people confused quite a bit. Um, how many is between fourteen fifty? Well, fourteen fifty is right here. 
which is my Q1. Um, $26 is right here, which is my Q3. And I know that this right here is got to be the 50%, the middle 50% of data. But 50% is not my answer. I just know that 50% of the data of the information falls between those prices. And I know that there's 12 grocery items. So what's 50% of 12? What's half of 12? That is six. There's six items there. And if I want to find the range of the cost, I just subtract the maximum from minus the minimum, 29 minus 7, and that gives me $22 is the range. What's the next question here? Um, and it's similar stuff, same, similar questions. Here's a box plot of test scores. There are 20 students that took this test. Question says, what percentage of students failed the math test? Well, here's failing is below a 70. We know that the Q1 right here is right at 70. So less than that, this front whisker, that has to be 25% of students that failed the test. The median we know is the middle, num middle line in the box plot. That's a 75, so that's the median score. How many students got an 85 or higher? Here's another question. How many students? Not what percentage of students. We know that 25% got an 85 or higher, but that's not how many of them got. If there's 20 students and I'm looking for 25%, I can do this two ways. 25% um, is, is a fourth, so I can just divide by four, which is five. Or I can take 20 and multiply by 0.25, which is 20%. Um, either way, it will give you the same answer. They're both the answer is five for both of them. Um, so there are five students that got an 85 or higher. Last question here: What is the interquartile range? Well, Q3 is 85, Q1 is 70. 85 minus 70 gives me 15. All right, on to the last two or last three here. Um, this question, doing similar stuff. You just got to be really careful when you are looking at these numbers here. We can see that it jumps six points from here to here. So that means every one hash mark in between is another three uh, spaces. So like this would be 155, this would be 161 right here, and so on. So you just got to be careful when you're doing that. It says the middle 50% of boys, so the middle 50% is from here to here. This number right here is, is up by three from here, so it'd be 179. And then um, this right here is kind of hard to see. If this is 182, this is 185, so this is about 186 or 187, and I can see that 186 is the only option there. So that's that answer there. The tallest 25% of girls are between Tallest twenty five percent is this whisker right here, that's between one seventy, and then if I go down here, that's this hash mark, and that's looks like it's one ninety one. Um, next question. Let's let me clear that out. Compare the shape of the two distributions. Um, so the girls definitely not symmetrical. This is skewed to the right. Uh, because there's a long whisker here, definitely skewed to the right, uh, long tail on this side. And the boys is mostly symmetrical. Um, you can say there's a very slight skew to the left, and that's only because this median is not in, really in the middle of the box. If the median was in the middle of the box, it would be perfectly symmetrical pretty much. Uh, but since the median is off to the right, you have a little bit more data on this side, uh, slightly skewed, but I would say mostly symmetrical for the boys. Uh, last question says, explain how you know that at least 75% of the girls in the school are shorter than the shortest boy. Well, here's the shortest boy right there at 173. And Q3 for the girls is smaller than, than the minimum for the boys. And I, we know that this all these three sections here have to be 75%. So that's why that 75% of the girls, at least 75% of the girls are shorter than the shortest boy. Um, we can prove that right there just because of the, that information. Um, lastly, uh, I'm going to kind of scroll through this. I didn't go through every question. This is kind of just to check your work. So as you're working on, if you watch the 6.4 um, video originally, you've already had the answers to question one and two. 
Um, you can pause the video, check your answer for number three. Please don't just copy it. You really need to know how to either use um, the calculator that I um, have you download here. I, we did that in the first video, in the 6.4 video. So if you didn't watch that yet, stop this video right now and go watch that because we did. I showed you how to do this. You're going to need to know how to either use this calculator or this website to um, put your information in. Um, but here you can check your answer for number three. We are we did page two in the original 6.4 video. So again, if you have not watched that video, go through it with this information to get this answers for this page and show you how to do everything. It'll show you how to do all this stuff and then you'll know how to do page three and four. Um, you can pause the video here, check your answer for number th for page three. Please don't just copy it. Please try it on your own and then check your answers. And then you can again pause the video and check your answer for page four. Um, you had to find the data for the 1990 first and then the 1995 data in this billboard charts. Um, there was no outliers for the 1990 data. There was an outlier for the 1995 data and you were supposed to um, draw both box plots right on top of each other next to the correct year. Since you could pause the video, I'm not gonna wait. Uh, that's it, if you guys have any questions, uh, get this stuff turned in and then you will um, take a quiz. The quiz is locked and loaded already at the, bo at the bottom of the unit six folder. Um, it is a Google form quiz, just like last time. Um, you'll, when you click on it, it'll open it up. Make sure you're please logged into your school Gmail account to take it. You can use your notes. Please do well on it by using your notes. Don't just don't use your friends. Okay. Um, anything, have a great spring break. I'll see you guys on the flip side.